the thing is that uh, before OSK actually we had a restaurant. It was kind of a, like a family business only. So um, the there were we were facing a lot of issues with the restaurants, mainly mostly with the traffic issues, the parking issues, uh, because um, it was in the uh, in the in the heart of the city. There is in Beltala Tinelli, and that is one of the most busy busiest uh, streets in the city. Uh, so we were actually losing out a lot of customers and I was actually cribbing a lot saying that why customers are not coming to my, my restaurant and all that and then suddenly I realized that why don't I uh, instead of asking the customers to come to my doorstep why don't I take the entire restaurant to the customers doorstep and um, that is when this idea popped up about a whole new brand about a, a virtual restaurant so this is our first part of the operation step so here are we get all the orders over here uh, we have the option of printing the KOTs so as soon as we print the KOTs I'll just give a small demo so here comes the KOT so once the KOT is ready so we'll get it over here we'll stack up the all the orders over here likewise according to our timing uh, that's how we stack up all the orders over here and once the orders are orders get over here so now there are different different uh, say um, perspective of, of every food so some of the food which we cook it in a bulk the the best sellers one say the fried rice noodles and all the we cook it in a bulk and there are few items which are cooked fresh so the fresh one goes over there and the bulk one goes over here so this they are into the, this my the packing team so they divide the food accordingly and then they go from dep uh, department to department so uh, we need to take care of the prep time very uh, prep preparation time is very important for us because uh, that actually help us in the listing and the quicker the food gets packed the the faster it is it is delivered to the customers so the prep time is very important for us uh, uh, so I'll, I'll show you how we stack up the food items so so once the food items now this is this one is being cooked fresh so this one is our dim sum combo so uh, one by one so each of the items are stacked up and then we have different combos so for every combos there are different uh, permutations and combinations and all that like for example we do an um, extensive uh, say this one so here are all the different kinds of combos which are which we print out and we, we make it possible we make it visible for everyone if just in case just in case say um, uh, someone misses out or say someone forgets what goes with this one then this is going to be handy for everyone now once the food is ready so so here this is ready so uh, okay this is not ready there are some few items there. once the food is ready so we we, we do the, all the packaging stuff we put our logo and then uh, which is very important is the is the, is the sealing of every food packages over here uh, which also works as a food safety also so once the food is ready over here we again come back we again come back for the food ready section so uh, these uh, KOTs are uh, have come with a barcode so which uh, help us with the with the scanning part so it a bit makes our work faster so we uh, I actually started creating a page initially it was a page the entire OSK was a social media page so the Facebook page was up the Instagram page was up now the next step was how exactly customers can relate like how exactly I can reach my uh, products to the customers and then uh, I started clicking pictures by myself because uh, a bit of uh, editing of the pictures a bit of good angles and that actually clicked and also the the major part about every food industry or every F&B industry is that people are not aware of what exactly they ordered what exactly uh, they want to consume and at the end of the day they end up ordering the wrong food item and then they complain that uh, this food was not good this this particular uh, place is not good or this cafe is not good so i used to i i wanted to make sure that people actually know what they are ordering so we we came up with a description section where every food had a had a story about where this cuisine is from how this cuisine was gen or originated how this um, uh, what are the proteins what are the ingredients of the food uh, food descriptions how we make the food and everything is included so that customers are more assured about uh, which particular food item to the, they can order and which particular food item will go out pair with a particular different particular item so that actually worked and then we started getting orders via social media page and uh, 
at one point of time the orders just jumped in such a high rate that we were not able to um, process or, or make a strategic or structured uh, operational flow and that is the reason this idea of application came and um, the major I, and, and also the one the major motive behind this application was that i want to get inside everyone's pocket because our phone is the next big thing in talking about technology or whatever everything is the entire world is shifting to the phones uh, even the hardly people we even me myself i hardly use my desktop or laptop for work rather than most of the all the item, all the works are actually done in the phone itself and um, so that is the reason this whole application came and not a website i didn't go for a website and i went for a an application and then the every process of an entire operation and entire um, this was a completely new ball game for this entire brand so there's another interesting about uh, a story behind this entire branding brand building thing so a customer uh, one day a customer abruptly called me and he was like i really need your help and i'm like okay tell me how may i help you and then he was like i had a big fight with my girlfriend i don't know what to do but then i know one thing that she loves your burger can you please send this burger this particular burger to her and also can you please write a small message with, with that food packet and i was like i would love to do that why don't you send why don't you just write down that message over whatsapp you have the whatsapp number this is whatsapp number itself just give me um, the message and we'll send it to you and also then i was like may i know where you where, where are you calling from and uh, and he was like i'm calling from bangalore and that was the moment and i was like wow a, a, a person a, peep, a guy was sitting in bangalore he, he f- had a fight with his girlfriend and he's using my food for his girlfriend so to 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 make up and i was like that adrenaline rush which i got back then and that was like okay we are building a completely new ecosystem over here it's a, it's a completely a new story every food has got a story every food has have a different kind of emotion every order we deliver have a different kind of emotion and that's that's what a brand is all about Actually, uh, the thing is that when I was doing my graduation, I was in final year. That was back in 2014, 2013-14. I'm talking 2014. So um, this idea came out that uh, about a, a subscription meal plan, or in normal term, in layman term, we can term it as a tiffin service. So this tiffin service idea came popped up, and I went to my dad and I told him that I want to do something um, of my own. I want to be an entrepreneur. and he was really furious my dad is an engineer so you know how this entire ecosystem work like if you're an engineer then your son he will obviously want me to be an engineer but then um, i convinced him that i want to uh, start something of my own and the only thing i knew back then was food <laughs> i know nothing other than food i've given like my entire life to food the I, i'm not a professional chef or i'm not a trained chef or cook or something but then I know which one, which platter goes with which particular, uh, say, um, cuisine, or say which which item goes with which the the spices and the ingredients and all that. And I convinced my dad to invest, and uh, then he invested uh, in a small fast food joint. So it was a very small fast food joint in a uh, VIP road in Six Mile, near the Six Mile Market. So uh, I was actually looking after the entire business. so the entire operation is right from marketing right from uh, mental uh, say um, human management uh, and from hiring and firing and everything i i was actually looking after it but um, it was in, in the name of my mom so the uh, the name of my, the restaurant was high tea so uh, even the food over there was completely um, abrupt like bizarre ideas used to come up and i used to experiment with the food and then few of the items we clicked actually uh, we had this uh, roll high tea roll i used to make sure that the idea behind the high tea roll was that a, a single roll is as equal to a per portion of meal so that's how i worked on and i was actually full time involved in the entire operations and all and uh, and then one point i i completed my graduation and then uh, for a year i looked after the entire operation and then i decided to go for my higher studies and then my mom took over the entire operation and she was running the entire operations and all that uske baad when i came back 
Then I transformed this entire uh, on a brick and mortar restaurant to WhatsApp Kitchen. This is an entire completely new brand. So initially when we started off, uh, this concept was completely new. People are not used to our opening an application and ordering. Rather than they used to call us over the phone. Despite of which we, we, we had the app, the, the app was already available. People were reluctant to even download the app and then they were more comfortable in ordering over the phone or whatsapp so we actually created our own market back then and uh, because of very less opportunities of when it comes to operations so we uh, came up with our own operations now this entire ecosystem has changed the after the entrance of uber eats zomato and swiggy this entire uh, customer experience of ordering food has has changed now everyone is into um, uh, opening the app and ordering and this has become a lifestyle and now the thing is that these companies are are very big they are unicorns we don't have the the power or the strength to compete with these companies so uh, that's what i told you that initially we had our own operations now we are facing a lot of operation issues i'll be honest we are, i'll be blunt we are facing a lot of operation issues because of obvious reasons we cannot compete with these companies but then we are focusing on our food now we are focusing on coming up with more cuisines now so it's part of it's it's basically a partnership with those platforms so now we have delivery we have delivery but we have cut down our delivery force so we have we have uh, we take bulk orders still we take bulk orders whenever it comes it comes to bulk orders or say uh, some special orders or or say from a particular areas we still do deliveries but when it comes to like a more of a like a say a door to door delivery we are obviously dependent on not dependent but then we prefer uh, those platforms when before before uh, entrance of all the food aggregators we were clocking somewhere around uh, 80 orders a day after that we started clocking 200 to 50 orders a day and obviously we don't have that strength to cater 250 orders in a particular day itself so it's 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 like a boon also and it's also a bane also for us during this course it's been it's been two and a half years now so before and um, these companies it's been for for this company it's been just eight to nine months now before that the entire ecosystem was completely different customers were i'm not blaming customers but then on, on from a business perspective the whole idea of ordering food was completely different now customers have become very price sensitive say if, if the market is say the market is of like 100 percent out of 10 percent are only local loyal customers and 90 percent are price driven customers now it depends on how exactly you are you are retaining your, your customers as simple as that companies have come over here i told you operationally we have we have actually got access of so many so much such a wide crowd but then again if we if we talk about a business perspective also they're they're uh, charging they're, they're charging a lot of commissions and at the end of the day customers are bearing that pain because uh, when they entered the market when they were penetrating the market the commissions rate were completely different now they they have everyone is changing the commissions rate and they're increasing obviously they are also here to do business we also here to do business but then at the end of the day customers have to bear it it's it's the customers if the commissions are increased then we are also going to increase our food prices but and then who is going to bear it's the customers who is going to bear but then again, there are there are certain players who who have um, who, who have done who have actually uh, cut down their prices and they are being being uh, able to provide the food at a lower cost. And obviously, it's 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 a human basic psychology. Okay, I'll give I'll give you my example. So a uh, few days back, it's been, it's been like few three four days back, we uh, suddenly started craving for sushi. So me and my friends were looking after all the probable options where which other places uh, which provide sushi and then we found out that uh, umami in taj they provide sushi and we were like let's go to taj it's been it's been way too long we hanged out together let's go to a fine proper place we'll hang out and all that we went there we had food we had a lot of fun we had a great time uh, meeting each other after so long and then the, when the bill came the bill <laughs> We, we, we didn't even realize the bill was somewhere around 
10,000 and we were just five people. The bill was somewhere around 10,000. And then I suddenly realized that, okay, whenever, whenever I open my, even I also use Swiggy Zomato and Uber Eats. Whenever I, as a customer, open those applications, I always look for uh, places which are providing food or which are providing heavy discounts. When it comes to food ordering, my purchase purchasing power, my ticket size is somewhere around 150 rupees or 180 rupees. But when it comes to uh, going out with your friends or going out with your family, my pocket size completely increases. So it's a human psychology. It's an ease and comfort food you want. Because when you order food, no one goes for a, 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 a pricey food affair. Because it's an, you know you are going to you, you just need a particular food side dish with your uh, normal rice or chapati or whatever it is. So you just need a, a chicken curry or even two pieces is enough. Even two pieces of pork curry is enough for you for one person. But then over there we we order wine, we order uh, beer, we order this cuisine, we order that cuisine. It's an experience we 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 want to spend on, and that's exactly how the market is evolving now the one who can excel in cutting down prices is going to be the king when it comes to b2c when it comes to business to consumer one who can provide uh, quality food at a, uh, at a at a lesser rate at a cheaper rate they're going to be the king and they're going to be survive so they're going to actually survive for in the long run if you can excel that hats off to you